Hello, it's Sydney and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting on the Fellowship of the Ring. Yes, you heard me right. I'm painting on a book. This is a series that I first saw on The Average Artist, which is an amazing artist and I love all of her videos, so please give her some love. But today it is going to be my version for The Fellowship of the Ring. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the process of me creating this and also the book itself and what it means to me. So let's get started. First, I thought I would talk about the process of how I created this piece. First of all, this is a book that my husband owns. He read The Lord of the Rings and it's just been sitting on our shelf gathering dust. It does have the poster of the movie on it, even though I love this poster and I love all the posters for Lord of the Rings. I think they're fabulous. It maybe isn't the best choice for a book. I totally understand why they put movie posters on books. It's just, it's just marketing, but I thought I could spruce this up and give it a new life. So now it'll be a piece of art and one of my favorite books. I used watercolor ground to paint on the surface. It takes pretty well. It does take a few coats, but it does work and I can just use watercolor right on top. So it's kind of like paper and that it will absorb the watercolor and act very similar to paper, a little bit different, but nothing to concern, be concerned about. I transferred a sketch that I designed from my sketchbook onto the watercolor ground with pencil and then from there I used my watercolors. The watercolors I used are like Turner and Daniel Smith, maybe some other things in there, just whatever was on my palette. So that's pretty much the process. It's not too complicated and it's very similar to what I did for The Hobbit. Now I thought I'd talk about the book itself and my history with The Lord of the Rings and kind of my goals for this year of rereading this book. So first of all, uh, my background with this series is that when I was a kid in fourth grade, they would read The Hobbit to us or this man would come and like he would read parts of the story. So I was a little familiar with The Hobbit when the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring movie came out about a year or two afterwards. So I was excited about this film. My mom knew and grew up when this series was kind of um, scandalous. She said she had to get the Lord of the Rings behind the counter at the library. Like you had to ask for it and the librarian would like loan it out to you without the knowledge of the library, if that makes sense, without like really checking it out kind of an honor system and this was like in the 70s I would say she was like in college so this is kind of interesting to me and I love this the, the story and my mother of course loves the story too and she took me to see the movie and usually she makes me read all the books before I would be able to see the movies but I think I didn't quite finish this book before I went to see it in theaters. And with this particular movie, I did go see it in theaters three times with my mom. It was insane. And as a kid that grew up and didn't get to go to the movies often, this was very special to me. I remember reading the book too when I was quite young, fifth and sixth grade. So I'm not sure if I got the full effect of the story just because I was so young and it is a little slow for a book nowadays, right? And I reread it in high school again and I may have reread it between here and high school, but I'm feeling that urge to reread the book. The Lord of the Rings is a fabulous series and 
story to come back to or to read for the first time, especially if you are a fantasy lover. A lot of modern fantasy books could be traced back to The Lord of the Rings. Uh, I think Tolkien did something very profound in literature, especially with fantasy books, and that he expanded on the idea that fairy tales were for children or fairy tales were, you know, to be disregarded or just to be viewed as something that has happened in the past. But instead, he took these stories and he made his own story. He made his own world from beginning to the end. He thought about how this world was made. He has a history, has many, many characters. Uh, and I feel like this is something that changed literature. You may be more knowledgeable in literature than me in the past, but for me, Tolkien was definitely the person who started this wonderful fantasy literature that we have today, or at least he should be thanked very much. So the Fellowship of the Ring is the beginning of the Lord of the Ring trilogy, and it comes from The Hobbit in that Bilbo is in the story, and Bilbo has a, I think it's his nephew, uh, Frodo, and Frodo is going to take over Bag Ends while Fro Bilbo goes to retire to Rivendell. And pretty much the plot is they find out that Bilbo came into the possession of the Ring of Power, which has a lot of, well, power to destroy the world if it was in the wrong hands. And he finds help from Gandalf and other hobbits in the Shire. This is Sam, Merry, and Pippin, and they set off to seek protection at Rivendell. And they're trying to flee because Gollum has told them, has told the enemy that the ring is in the Shire, and so they're pretty much fleeing. They, pretty, they go on an adventure, they meet all sorts of interesting characters, they end up getting picked up by Strider, who is Aragorn, and they get taken to Rivendell. That's pretty much the beginning, and that is pretty much like the first part of the whole book, and some would say it's a bit slow, but it is very beautiful, and it is, again, written as, I think, for being read out loud still. And it feels like a legend. The scene I decided to, to illustrate on the cover of this book is the Belrog and the Shire. So I was trying to show that there is a bit of stillness, there is a bit of peacefulness in this book with showing the Shire and Bag End and this party tree, but then also showing that sense of danger and urgency that is in the book if even though the urgency isn't quite understood until halfway through the book. I chose the Belrog instead of the Ringwraiths, which is a really popular motif in book covers for the Fellowship, because the Belrog to me is like really scary. Like it is the unknown. It It is not even really explained within the book where it comes from. And it, spoiler alert, it kind of ruins the Fellowship. It this is like the point where the fellowship is like broken and it it to me is the scariest part and like i said i wanted to show that peacefulness that's also in the book that happens in the shire and as they move away the goal is that in the background of the next book i will have the the landscape slowly changing and then in the final book the return of the king I want Mount Doom to be kind of the background piece to show kind of the real urgency and the movement of travel. And of course, I did put a golden ring around the illustration in the middle, which is a circle, so that it can mimic the Hobbit one that I did before. And I did this with glitter because of course I did. It's glitter. I love glitter. 
My goal this year is to reread the Lord of the Rings trilogy. There's several reasons why I want to do this. I don't remember the last time I read the Lord of the Rings. I know I read it in high school at one point, but I felt like I read it one more time and I really just can't remember. I bet I haven't read the books in about 10 years. And that makes me really sad because these are the books that made me who I was when I was in middle school and in high school. And the films, obviously. <laughs> I also am trying to get back into the groove of The Lord of the Rings because of the new series that's coming out, The Rings of Power, I believe is what is the title for the Amazon um, Cimmerillion story. I'm not quite sure. So I really want to be refreshed on the original story and be ready to, of course, go. And I also found that lovely podcast. I think it's called Second Breakfast. Yes, it's called the Second Breakfast. And they do a podcast um, for each chapter from The Hobbit all the way to The Return of the King. And they actually just finished watching the movie, The Return of the King Part 1. And I definitely love listening to them because I don't have a large friend group that likes to read and that's one of the reasons I am drawn to booktube and it kind of feels like I have a little book club that will discuss one of my favorite books which is Lord of the Rings so yeah that's why I want to reread the series and I am very very nervous about the release from Amazon, The Ring of, Rings of Power, and I really hope it will uh, excite the Lord of the Rings fan group and not disappoint us. So yeah, that's why I want to read the books again, and the reason I am painting over these books is just this series means a lot to me, and I... I want to fall back into that world as soon as possible. Thank you for sticking around and watching me create some art and paint on a book. And also, thanks for sticking around and listening to me ramble about one of my favorite books, the Lord of the Rings series, the Fellowship of the Ring. Look forward to me tackling the next book, The Two Towers. And if you want, I've also got The Hobbit. You can watch that one be made too. I really hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you later. Bye. Have a wonderful rest of the day or night or whatever you are, whatever you're doing. Just, I hope, I hope everything's fabulous.